Good evening. Okay, I want everybody to get up. Okay, I want you to turn to somebody who do not know. Turn to somebody you don't know, introduce them, say welcome to UNFC, and do the sign to them. Okay, somebody you do not know. Turn, turn, go around, look, look around the bed. Okay, thank you. You will get a chance afterwards. So th that's a prelude to what I hope you're going to do after we're done here, is that you're all going to get together and mingle and get to make new friends tonight. I hope that by the time everybody leaves here today, you're going to have one new friend. Okay, maybe two. But definitely, we want you to have one new friend. So my name is Deli Davies and I oh, sorry about that. My name is Deli Davies and I have the privilege of serving as the senior vice chancellor for academic affairs and the dean for graduate studies here at UNMC. I want to extend my very warm welcome to all of you, our students, those who are here with us, and those who are joining remotely. I also welcome your family members and your friends who are here this, this evening. Matriculation is a time-honored tradition that welcomes new students into the membership of academic institutions around the world. We are welcoming you today to official graduate student membership at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Your presence here means that you have survived the screening through our rigorous processes and you have been found to meet the high academic standards we expect of our students. You are joining a very high caliber of more than 100 incoming students from Nebraska, the United States, and over 30 countries around the world. During the next few years, you will be taught by some of the best research faculty in America and in the world. Our mission here at UNMC is to lead the world in transforming lives to create a healthy future for individuals and communities through premier educational programs, innovative research, and extraordinary clinical care. As such, many of our programs here are ranked among the very best in the nation. While our primary goal in graduate studies has been and continues to be to train academic uh, researchers on the next generation of scientists, we also recognize that many of you will choose careers outside academia when you finish training with us. For this reason, during, this, uh, during your four, five years, or maybe two years for some of you with us, we'll give you plenty of opportunity to learn to be leaders, teachers, and critical thinkers, so you can work effectively in teams and to learn several other skills that we refer to as professional skills. These are skills that are going to be of value to you no matter what profession you end up doing, no matter what career you choose, these skills will be of value to you. Literally hundreds of people have been working very hard to prepare a campus for your arrival and to make sure that you are safe here and as welcome here as anywhere you would have chosen to go. Our goal is to deliver you a world-class education while also ensuring that you have fun while you're here. You may be the one whose research needs to, leads to the next breakthrough on how we manage pandemics, or whose work leads to the next generation of vaccines, rapid diagno diagnostic tests, or other breakthroughs that will impact not only infectious diseases or cancer, but also pharmaceuticals, neurosciences, and so forth. Some of you will be trained to be researchers, others teachers, industry pioneers, science writers, etc. But you will all have the opportunity to grow here, no matter what your chosen path, path is. 
We do have a career counseling service within the Graduate Studies Office for those of you who may need some guidance during your training in determining what your future career options could be. You can access that service by contacting our Director of Graduate Studies, standing right back there, Terry Vodovsky. While at UNMC, you will find many advocates, natural allies, and colleagues within the Graduate Students Association. Sitting right here, you're going to meet the President in a few minutes, where you can participate and influence and enhance the culture here at UNMC. The GSA is a strong ally of the Graduate Studies Program, and they have been very instrumental in shaping how we deliver our programs and how we make sure that you all have an extraordinary time while you're here. Every organization has its core values. At UNMC, our core values spell out the word, I teach. And I would like to just ask you to embrace and help us help understand what I teach is. I is for innovation. While you're here, we're going to constantly search for a better way to do things. T is for teamwork. We respect individual and cultural differences in race, religion, ethnicity, national origin, age, gender, sexual orientation, and disabilities, and believe that there are no limits to what we can accomplish when we work together. E is for excellence. We expect and find that you will find all the faculty and staff here strive for the highest standards of safety and quality in all that we do and work to achieve exceptional results. A is accountability. We commit, we take ownership, we are resilient, transparent, and honest. We always try to do the right thing and to be an organization that learns from the past. C is for courage. We're not afraid to make tough decisions, not afraid of failure in the pursuit of excellence. We are courageous enough to admit our mistakes and to learn from them. Finally, H is for healing. We encourage one another to show empathy, to be selfless in caring for one another and caring for the communities in which we live and work. I strongly encourage each and every one of you to take full advantage of the very strong physical amenities we have here at UNMC. During the winter, you'll have the opportunity to enjoy ice skating at the rink located at the Scott Pavilion, just outside the Michael Sorrell Center. You should also take advantage of our Student Fitness Center, affectionately, affectionately called the Center for Healthy Living, which has an excellent gym, basketball and badminton courts, and other superb equipment for your physical wellness. During stressful periods, we have psychologists and counselors to support you and help you grow and move forward in a healthy way. And at my Guggen Health Services Library, actually has a room for you to go and distress if you want to before exams. And they actually, just as a little tip, typically will have some food there just before exams, some cookies, all the healthy stuff. So I welcome each and every one of you as you join our family of UNMC graduate students. Get engaged. Strive for connections with your peers, your faculty, and your staff. And most importantly, remember that there is as much to be gained from the journey as there is in the destination. Make sure you enjoy the journey. These could and should and often is among the very best years of your life. Finally, as W.B. Yeats noted, education is not the filling of a pot or the lighting of a fire. We are fortunate that we have not only a great school but also great teachers here at UNMC who will be working hard to light a fire in you. And I just actually want to thank those teachers right now. If you are a faculty member here, please stand. We'd like to recognize you. Join me in recognizing these faculty members who are here today. <laughs> Finally, my special thanks to the outstanding team of staff who have organized this um, evening tonight. And Terry's bringing them in because they usually are outside when I, when I say this. So we want them to be really recognized. Welcome, guys. So, Terry, can you wait? So, Terry Vadovsky is the director of our graduate studies program. Emily Brandt, office associate, Trent Ballard, 
Office Associate Rhonda McDonald, Office Associate. Thank you guys for what you do and thank you for making us have the superb program that we have. I'll let you off, you can go back and unless you want to stay. We have other members of our team here today. Dr. Kendra Schmidt is the Executive Associate Dean for Graduate Studies. Dr. Kendra Gould is the Assistant Dean for Graduate Student Success. I, don't, I know Dr. Laura Billick is not here because she was going to be, but she, she, um, she wasn't feeling too well today. Uh, Dr. Matt Zimmerman is the Director of our IGPBS program. And um, Dr. Dan Monahan, did I see Dan here? Dan's not here. Uh, Kim Rothgeb. Keep, keep by the outside, and Matthew Morganson. And I know that you've already had, we have all the faculty members who have stood up, so thank you for that. <laughs> so every year we try to pick a faculty member to give you some words of wisdom when you show up here. And we now have a tradition that the person we pick is the person who has been chosen by the graduate students the year before as the outstanding graduate mentor. And it's my pleasure today to introduce Dr. Joyce C. Solheim as the 2023 recipient of the Mentoring Award from our Graduate Students Association. So Dr. Solheim is the Associate Director for Training and Education at the Fred and Pamela Buffett Cancer Center here at UNMC as well as a professor at the Epple Institute for Research in Cancer and Allied Diseases. Dr. Solheim joined UNMC in 1999 and has since worked her way up from assistant professor to full professor and has had an incredibly distinguished career. Uh, she has received basically all the honor and awards you can think about for training and research. She's been the um, graduate studies of standing faculty mentor of graduate students, as I mentioned. Graduate Studies Alumni Council's Honorary Alumnus Award, as Outstanding Faculty Mentor of Graduate Students Award that was uh, given a couple of years ago, Outstanding Faculty of Ma Graduate Students given by the Faculty Senate, and USMC, UNMC Distinguished Scientist Award. Now her CV is 59 pages, and if I try to read it to you, we'll be here all night long. So I'm just gonna say a couple of interesting things about her. One is that She's had a very distinguished career working on pediatric brain cancers and pancreatic cancers and a lot of in incredible um, work. She's got patents and a lot of publications and present presented nationally. But I will say that her real passion, from what I can see interacting with her, is really wanting to see every single graduate student succeed. She's one of the most passionate and thoughtful and caring faculty members when it comes to faculty issues. So it's somebody that you really want to get to know because she's going to be in your corner trying to see what she can do to make your time here successful. Um, she's also involved in our diversity and inclusivity committee. She's involved in Native, Amer Native American community helping to educate the future generation of Native American scientists. So I asked her a few questions and you know, I always like to make this not just about the 59 page CV but also trying to understand who's behind that CV. So I asked her why she came to UNMC, and she said she came here because of the great opportunities that UNMC you know, has for cancer and immunology, one of the top places in the, in the world. Um, she's from a small town outside of Gilman City, Missouri, population 400. So I mean, some of you, how many of you are from rural parts of the country? Raise your hand. Yeah. So we have several, several people who can relate. I asked her what she liked. Why did she come to Omaha? She said, because Omaha is known to have wonderful people. I also asked her what she liked most about UNMC. She said, wonderful people. So that's really good. So you know that you're going to meet wonderful people here. I asked her what her favorite memory of UNMC has been so far. And again, I'm not surprised about this. She said, seeing students complete their degrees. This makes me very happy every time it happens. Um, her hobby is, includes spending time with her family and taking walks. And I asked her who her favorite musician is. And her favorite musician is her daughter, who plays a traditional Norwegian instrument similar to a violin. So without much ado, join me in welcoming Dr. Solheim as the key 
note speaker and well-deserving uh, 2023 graduate studies matriculation ceremony speaker. Thank you. And uh, if you can't hear me, I think our microphone is well, but if you can't hear me, wave your hand. I'm, I don't have a very loud voice, you know. So let's think about stories. Think about your own story, your own background, why you're here, why you chose to become a graduate student at UNMC your goals for graduate school, and your goals for your career after you're finished. Okay. So your story. So I'll tell you a few stories from my past. And you can think about whether there are aspects that you want to work into your story and keep in your story. So the oldest story is from when I first started in a research lab. And I was learning some new procedures, some things were going well. But in that first week, I misunderstood which bottle of media to use for the cell culture. Well, the cells did not do well. So we had to thaw some more out. So I had to forgive myself. That's one of the first things I was doing in a lab. And to understand how to improve and do better. So consider working into your story from the very beginning, forgiving yourself. Science is difficult. It's difficult for faculty too. There aren't any faculty here or anywhere else in the country for whom all grant applications are funded, all manuscripts that they submit are accepted, but people learn, try new things, improve. So consider forgiving yourself, always. In the second story, I have to fast forward quite a bit. Finished my PhD, finished my postdoc, and was starting my first research laboratory position as an assistant professor. And I'd hired a person, my first employee, technician, and he began working in the lab. I was showing him procedures. Each thing, he was doing well. So I was giving him this technical advice. And then after a couple of weeks, he stopped by my office and he said, he's a very friendly, very nice person. He said, how am I doing? And it was not in an anxious way. He was asking for mentoring. He was communicating with his new mentor. And so it was a lesson for me to talk with him on a broader scale than just how many microliters do you add to the tube for this procedure. So consider always keeping in your story communicating with your mentor mentors, includes your advisor, your primary advisor, more senior students, postdocs, other faculty members. Communicate your successes, communicate your needs, listen to their advice, tell them what you need. So consider communication in your story. So 
third story from me. Moving further forward, I remember a candidate for faculty position interviewed here at UNMC and comments from the search committee that the person had done very well at every level. And the person was offered the position and took it. So consider, as you enter graduate school, to work into your story to do very well. It takes effort, it takes quality effort. But at the same time, always care for yourself. Know your own limits, sleep, exercise, eat nutritiously, and enjoy people around you. Okay, and final story. And this one's, I'm involved in the periphery of this, but it's mainly about others. And it takes a little bit of background. It starts with a program called the High School Alliance, which is a program here at UNMC. And it's a partnership of UNMC and local schools. And there's funding from a philanthropic foundation. So one of the courses in the High School Alliance is the Biology and Prevention of Cancer. And this course has a certified high school teacher through the Omaha Public School System. And I'm the course faculty director. And I asked graduate students if they'd be interested in teaching in the course. And there are always many who, want, who volunteer. So I asked the, I go over the students' lectures with them, and give them suggestions if it's needed, whenever it's needed. And I asked them at the beginning to put in information about themselves where they came from, what their goals are in graduate school, a little about their project, and what they're planning to do in the future. So as the course went on, the students learned a lot. The certified high school teacher gave them the exams. And at the time of the final exam, he added on an extra credit question, which was, do you think cancer will be cured in 10 years? And ask them, you know, not just yes or no, but discuss their answer. So, as he read, so he, he told me about this after he had uh, looked at these exams. And he said I had, that he had an answer in mind. And the answer had to do with cancer is a very difficult problem. And those students knew exactly why now. They knew about genes that are turned on, that produce too much of proteins that make the cells grow too fast and go to the wrong places in the body. They learned about how cancer gets in the way of the immune system's defense. And they were explaining those things in their answers. All the difficulties, all the challenges. But, but he told me they would end their answer by explaining 
these graduate students told us what they're working on. And they told us about how they will be carrying on these studies in companies and universities and teaching and helping in clinical trials. So those students understood that the stories of graduate students are the hope. They're the hope. And that goes not only for cancer, but all diseases, infectious disease, cardiovascular disease, neuromuscular conditions. For all diseases, they knew now. The graduate students are the best and the only hope for the relief of illness and the pain and the suffering and the early loss that it causes. They knew that the best and only hope is your story. Okay, I have a confession. As I was coming in, I was only given one instruction, <laughs> and that was to advance the slides, and I didn't, so here we go. <laughs> and I don't, is it going? No. Okay, never mind. Here we go. There's your agenda. Okay, that's me. That's Dr. Solheim, so. <laughs> Now I've caught up with my instructions. So now I would like to introduce uh, two of our key call leaders here to help with the next stage, the, I guess maybe the key part of what you all want to see. And that will be um, our Executive Associate Dean, Dr. Kendra Schmidt, and our Assistant Dean for Graduate Studies Success, Graduate Student Success, Dr. Karen Gould. Dr. Gould's going to come up first. They're going to introduce the students who are going to come up here, and we're going to get to meet each and every one of you and um, welcome you to UNMC and to the UNMC family. Dr. Gold. And I would like to invite some of our faculty members who are here. Oh. Just join They're just going to stand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So we're going to just have you guys, when your name is called, just stand up and, and you will be um, captured on photo. So there you go. Right. So. Um, Right, so as Dr. Davies was saying, what we'll do next is recognize each of our new students. We'll call your names by program. When we call your name, please stand up. Remain standing until all the students in your program have been recognized, and then we're gonna clap, and then y'all can sit, sit down. So the first uh, program is a certificate in applied health informatics. Julie Mammon. And I should mention, before I get too far, some of our programs are online or have online options. So sometimes we'll call a name and nobody stands up. So they may be standing up where they are, okay? <laughs> so. Daniel Pierce, Maggie Rudnicki Sutton, Amanda Stabler. Okay, we're gonna give them a round of applause. Anyway. Okay. So next, we have the certificate in healthcare quality improvement. Brian Juber, Jessica Lee, and Kelsey Zindel. Okay. 
the Certificate in Healthcare Professions Teaching and Technology. Amber Hawk. Kareth Wolf. All right, that's it for that. All right. Next is the Master of Healthcare Delivery Science. Monko Bunwang Glapinski. Aaron Kitka. Anna Hargens. Nikki Kudlash. Leslie Lakey. Shane Wyrick and Katie White. <laughs> Next is the Master in Health Professions Teaching and Technology. Vanessa Crookshank. Christy Crow. Amy Cutright. Kayla Heidbrink, Jennifer Legino, Nada Maddie, Chelsea McConnell, Denise Muller, Haley Mum, Luke Palacio. Farouk Pradeen, and Lauren Schiefelbein. We, we are going to have somebody stand up eventually, all right? Promise. Applied Behavior Analysis, Master of Science. Chandler Peterson. McKenna Riley. <laughs> Next is the Biochemistry and Molecular Biology Master of Science. Ojeshvi Ethiraj. <laughs> we gotta give the clap for the first one to stand up. All right. Puampuil. Marivaran, Indamadi Ramaredi, <laughs> next is the Biostatistics Master of Science, Mazin Aldegani, Aubrey Carter, Claire Landgren, Ijun Liu, Stanley Nanamer, Diana Pham, Aaron Ramsey, Tyler Sharber, Gianni Chang, Shishuan Chang. <laughs> Cancer Research Master of Science. Aaron Darnell. Callie Martin. Amanda Robotham. Alexander Sage. And Khadija Turabi. Next is the Immunology, Pathology, and Infectious Disease Master of Science program. 
Jayama Gurung, Dania Satut, Devapriya Sutar. Now we have the Medical Anatomy Master of Science program. Emily Aldrich. Logan Anderson. Avery Decker. Jordan Finch. Drew Hedstrom. Garrett Lenners. Huda Mian. Isabella Michelli. Charles Porto. Natalie Radcliffe. Claire Richardson. Jenna Thompson. Carson Walker. Lori White, and Connor Young. Now we move on to the Medical Physiology Master of Science program. Hadabalar Abagunrin, Saruth Balraj, Alexandra Blake, Jillian Kramer, Caleb Kranzler, Kennedy Sheely. Gretchen Simon, Cole Smith, Abby Stevens, and Reagan Tukolsky. <laughs> the Molecular Genetics and Cell Biology Master of Science program. Ritesh Day, Minzi Yu, Lushan Lee, Rosemary Withiga, Fatima Rajabi, Blaine Winkler. and Han Yu Xiao. Next, we move on to a series of programs that are part of the Medical Sciences Interdepartmental Area, or MSIA. So the first is the MSIA Clinical and Translational Mentored Scholars Program, Master of Science. Our one new student in this program is Austin Wheeler. Next is the MSIA Health Practice and Medical Education Research Master of Science program. Benjamin Stephensmeyer. the MSIA Oral Biology Master of Science program. Christine Alder. Rihanna Bashir. 
Naum Ha. Gregory Inglesby. And John J. Koo. The final master's program is a pharmaceutical sciences master of science. Samia Actor. Jared Bogenhagen. Amit Cole. And Zaluk Sheth. Next, I'll invite Dr. Schmidt, who Dr. Davies previously introduced. She'll come up and read off the names for all of the incoming PhD students. All right, thank you, Dr. Gould. And um, we'll just continue along in this fashion. We'll introduce PhD students by program. Um, Stand when your name is called and remain standing for all your program, and then we will welcome you all together. So first we have the Biomedical Informatics PhD program, and we have one new student this year, Elizabeth Reicher. Next, we have the Biostatistics PhD program. Kai Afari, Ronit Gandhi, <laughs> Wendy Hyong, Ying Xiong, Yue John. The Environmental Health, Occupational Health, and Toxicology PhD program. We have two new students this year. Ikenna Orji, Nusha Sabet. <laughs> For the Epidemi Epidemiology PhD program, James Buckley, Christine Mancia Dubon, Ian Marchenton. For the Health Promotion and Disease Prevention Research PhD program, Philip Abudo, Ariana Crum, Koyod Alabanji. Next is a Health Services and Policy Research PhD program. <clears throat> Jonathan Filio Menji. <clears throat> Daniel Lamprecht Carson. Marlette Grace Dulcine Mabiala May. Sifat Sheik. And now we'll begin um, the interdisciplinary graduate program in biomedical sciences called IGPBS for short. The first group of students are students who have not committed to a particular research area yet and then we'll go through the subplan specific new students as well. 
Isaac Adedigi. Joy Adewumi. Sunjana Banerjee. Kennedy Doty. Samia Afruz Etter. Misha Gonsvind. Mohammed Hassan. Gabriel Ebon. Aliyah Jabenis. <laughs> Artha Lot Lotley, sorry, Lotley Carr. <laughs> Madison Love. Maggie Long, <laughs> Megan McNorton, <laughs> Madeline Meredith, <laughs> Eric Pingirica. Nikita Murugaval, <laughs> Sabia Owusu Konado, <laughs> Joynab Akhtar Pushpo, <laughs> Brittany Raby. Malia Rolf, <laughs> Mafuza Afraz Soma, <laughs> Chafali Srivastrava, <laughs> Ariana Tucker. Kara Vishwakarma, <laughs> Terry Weezy. <laughs> All right, that was a big one. Now we'll do the IGPBS Biochemistry and Molecular Biology subplan. Uluwashin Adibisi, Dorcas Akinuli, <laughs> Rah Rahit Duwanji, Juanita George Raj. Paris Gupta, Esther Johnson, Priyanjali Mukherjee, <laughs> Najin Zia Miyavogi. Now the IGPBS Bioinformatics and Systems Biology. Saadi Rashidi and Mong To Sun. And the IGPBS Cancer Research Program. Min Jong Beck. Sarah Demargi, 
Niaha Kathuria. David Kum. IGPBS Immunology, Pathology, and Infectious Disease, PhD program. Riddy Bola. Taylor Dunning. Jackson Kramer. Ishrath Jahan Kanpali. And in the IGPBS Integrative Physiology and Molecular Medicine program, we have two incoming students this year. Emmanuel Eduejekom. <laughs> and Deor Ogunwale. Next is IGPBS Molecular Genetics and Cell Biology. Adkira Fareha. Samuel Gilman. Mohammed Subhan Karvadi. Elijah Maniki. Arajun Surya Subramanya, Farzan Tamanafar, IGPBS Neuroscience PhD program, Mohammed Uzare Ali. Bharat Chaudhry, Luke Hamilton, Nada Hassan, Sunday Ogandepo, and Leanne Shu. For the MD PhD scholars, we welcome Taylor Burke, Caroline Case, Anna Kosmok, and Rebecca Raposa. Next, we will go through some of our MSIA programs, and you may be thinking, didn't Dr. Gould already do that? Some of the programs have both a master's and a PhD. So these um, are the MSIA PhD incoming students. First is applied behavior analysis. Rebecca Baral, Samantha Bryan, Alexandra Cicero, Jasmine Carr, Guang Yi Lin, Mary Saul Loza Hernandez, and Whitney Trapp. In the Biological Defense and Health Security subplan, we welcome three new students Vicki Herrera, Assam Hadabet, and Katherine Warner. Our 
Next is MSIA Health Practice and Medical Education Research. Ashley Ballier. <laughs> Ryan Kennedy. Madeline Clunan. Connor Das. Mariah Gaysink. Luther Mardock and Kelsey Teakin. Um, for the oral biology program, we have Nagin Sogli and Yu Rong Yan. For the patient-oriented research program, we have one new student this year, Shamema Salam. <laughs> Next is our PhD program in nursing, Megan Dubas, Carla Kerkove, and Jamie Weber. All right, and now I promise this is my last page. This is the Pharmaceutical Science PhD program. We have a lot of new students in this program this year. Salma Altobadi, Shanam Arash, Rashiram Baral, AJ Kumar Chiripolu, Rocky Chaudhry, Rajashri Chaudhry. Xiao Ching Du, Elizabeth Etafo, Priha Honden, Kimia Herbod, Ting Ho. Chibuke Ikuka <laughs> Mihir Kachia <laughs> Ahmed Mansi Ukamaka Modebailu Atafe Sadat Moneirvakifi, Silas Use, <laughs> Kiana Sherkatsadi, Pratikshya Shrishta. Amaya Sunil Sukia and William Taylor. <laughs> Welcome to all of our incoming certificate, masters, and PhD students. Thank you, Dr. Schmid and Dr. Gould. And again, congratulations to all the incoming students. It's now my great pleasure to invite the president of our Graduate Student Association, Sophia Kissling.
Sophia is a PhD student in biochemistry and molecular biology and a strong advocate for student support. And I think she'll introduce her team as well. Well, join me in welcoming Sophia. Good, e good evening all, and congratulations new students and welcome to UNMC. As Dr. Davies mentioned, my name is Sophia Kissling, and I am the incoming president of the Graduate Student Association here on campus. I'm here today to speak to you from a student perspective and also give you a peek at maybe what you're going to be expecting in the years that you'll be here. As a fifth year student with high hopes to graduate this coming May, I like to think that my experiences at UNMC have taught me many valuable lessons, perhaps the most important of which I will do my best to share with you tonight. But first, please do this with me. Take a deep breath. Hold for three seconds and out. That's it. This marks the beginning of a new chapter in your lives, and I have to say that it's going to be very memorable and filled with lifelong friendships, connections, laughter, some fears, and tears, quite frankly. But most importantly, lessons I believe will help you guide you in what will arguably be the most important time and most interesting time of your lives. Having been in your shoes not so long ago and having nearly successfully passed through this institution, I offer this first lesson. Your training in education while different, are equally important. One of the reasons you are here is to receive training and research, learning new techniques, how to design an experimental plan, and how to accurately address scientific questions. These are all extremely valuable, of course. But your education can be broader than that training. Your education will prepare you for the unknown and provide you with the experience that you need to tackle future problems. Your education won't only happen in the classroom. It will happen wherever you are willing to learn. When I sat in this hall four years ago, listening to the matriculation lecture, I couldn't wait to jump into graduate school experience. However, if you had told me then that I would be preparing to graduate with several publications and be giving this very lecture, I probably would have laughed because I was unaware of how much my experiences here would shape me as a person and a scientist. So I encourage you all to get involved with the UNMC community and the many opportunities that are offered here. It is true that while you are primarily here to do research and further develop your laboratory skills, there are many more important opportunities for enhancing your education and professional development outside of the laboratory. Many of you likely want to pursue an academic career. Others may be interested in alternative careers, such as policy, industry, government, or advocacy. In any career, you will need the skills in areas beyond the bench work, and there are multiple multitude of opportunities here for you to achieve that. Regardless of which path you foresee for yourself, please get involved. Attend professional development seminars and networking events and volunteer and join a student organization. Seek opportunities that you're curious or passionate about and then follow through with them. If you're not sure where to start, reach out to me or any other member of GSA. We will be very happy to speak with you. I will also be sending weekly emails to you all to keep you informed of many of these opportunities. And speaking of, I encourage you all to attend the Student Organization Fair tomorrow. It's a great opportunity to learn about all the opportunities to get involved on campus. Staying involved will not only provide you with the necessary skills to succeed, but may inspire you to pursue a new or different path. You may meet people that change your trajectory. Personally, I can recall several instances in which I attended a seminar or an activity on a whim, but left with impressions that changed my ideas for the future. I have learned a lot of experiences in life are often due to a series of coincidences. We often end up where we are by chance because we're in the right place at the right time, met the right person, or heard the right idea. These moments can be life-changing, so take advantage of the opportunities available here. Do not miss out on one of these coincidences that could lead you somewhere, perhaps on the very path you were always meant to be on. Lesson two, your health is your most valuable asset. Pay attention to your physical, mental, and spiritual health. There are facilities available to tend to your ills, whatever they may be. Do not wait until you have reached the breaking point before seeking help. That is also why it's important to surround yourself with classmates and friends who can infer from what your behavior, whether you're doing all right or not, even if you can't voice it to them yourself. There's only strength in being able to ask for help when you need it. As future healthcare professionals and as future scientists, we can only help the greater scientific community if we ourselves are healthy and well. 
So on that note, I would like to wrap up with a reminder that UNMC does have a highly supportive student body and administration. When you're frustrated, feeling down, or have inevitably hit a block, I encourage you to reach out to your peers and find support. At tonight's reception, I invite you all to come speak with me or any member of the GSA executive team, two of you are, whom are with me today, who I'll ask to stand now, please. <laughs> My Vice President, Namata Bapla, and our Student Engagement Chair, Rachel Kerberg. We are here tonight to welcome and support you as you begin this journey. Again, I'm glad you have jo chosen to join us here, and welcome to UNMC. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sophia. Can everybody hear me at the back? Okay. Thank you, Sophia. Um, we are very fortunate that we have a very engaged group of alumni. And by the way, when you join us, we look at you not as a matriculating class, but we look at you as future alumni. And one of those alumni is somebody who, when they were here at UNMC, not that long ago, they were very, very engaged, very active, and they are now out there in the world. I would like to invite Dr. Nicholas Whitenick, president of the UNMC Graduate Alumni Council, who is a 2020 graduate of a cancer research program, to welcome you. He's going to be online. Is my grand on the way? Let me go back. Um, yes. <laughs> Just, you have to switch it. Yeah. There you go. There I am. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Davies. Uh, good evening. And um, I'm sorry that I can't make it in Omaha right now. I'm, I'm actually in the Boston area. So um, just wanted to give a big welcome to all the new students, to which is possibly your last first day of school. My name is Nick Wytenick, and I currently work at Verisim Oncology, which is a biotech company based in the Boston area. Um, while I take pride in my career and the current work that Verisim is doing for cancer patients, I'm even more proud to call myself an alumni of UNMC, having recently graduated with, with a PhD in cancer research in 2020. So in addition, I'm currently serving as a president of the Graduate Studies Engagement Council of the UNMC Alumni Association. And on behalf of this council, I would like to formally welcome you to UNMC. You should be extremely proud of your accomplishments that got you to this point in your academic career. And the path that lays ahead over the next couple of years at UNMC will be a challenge, but, but a very rewarding experience. So um, I realize that the term alumni can feel very far away from where you're sitting right now as you begin your graduate student careers. Um, but the job of our council is to support graduate studies and all of you. We accomplish this goal by partnering with the Graduate Studies Office, the GSA and the Nebraska Foundation to sponsor a number of events, which include matriculation like today, networking events, fellowships, convocation and graduation. Throughout all of these events, the overarching goal is to strengthen the relationship between students and alumni and provide career development opportunities for all of the students at UNMC. I'm very much looking forward to working with you and your peers over the coming years. Finally, I know that we're near the end of the matriculation ceremony, so everyone's uh, probably dying to get out and um, enjoy the reception. But I'd like to leave you with a quick word of advice. Um, so I'm biased and I grew up playing hockey. So naturally I have to, um, incorporate a quote, uh, a sports analogy, um, that has to do with hockey. So you may be familiar with the hockey hall of famer, Wayne Gretzky. Um, he's known for holding the NHL record for goals and assists. I, and he cemented his place in history as the greatest hockey player of all time. Um, but in addition, um, I think he's, uh, remembered equally as much for a famous quote um, that spoke to his philosophy that really led to all of his accomplishments in his career. Um, and this quote is, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. 
And I'm sure you've heard this quote plenty of times, it's kind of a cliche, but taken literally in sports, it's quite obvious that in hockey, soccer, basketball, if you don't take a shot, you don't have the opportunity to score a goal. Um, but this can be applied to other areas of life, including the beginning of your graduate career right now. At UNMC, you have a tremendous opportunity to not only learn from your faculty, um, but also become part of a world-class research program. And I think um, the accomplishments of UNMC speaks for themselves. Um, it's important to step back and see everything that UNMC provides the world, um, whether it being a global leader in COVID-19 or an SCCN designated cancer center, uh, the impact of the work at UNMC truly drives humanity forward. Um, so as a next generation of researchers, it's gonna fall into your hands to carry forward this legacy and eventually join a diverse and accomplished group of alumni who currently are doing everything from working in academia, on increasing our understanding of disease, um, and developing new life-changing medicines in the pharmaceutical industry, or facilitating new healthcare policy and advancements at the FDA and in government. So in saying this, it's important to remember to take advantage of all of your opportunities at UNMC and not be afraid to make mistakes. Every single breakthrough, whether it's big or small, started with a single shot on goal, just as Wayne Gretzky said. Whether it's reaching out to a collaborator, pursuing an internship, or acting out on a research idea, you never know where this first step will take you. So again, myself and the council are eager, eager to support you throughout your graduate career and are very much looking forward to seeing you achieve your new goals. Thanks and welcome to UNMC. Thank you so much, Nicholas. We're so proud of you and very um, pleased that you uh, chose UNMC to be your training ground. Um, we're now getting to the end of our program. Nicholas mentioned Wayne Gretzky. Um, I'm a, also a big fan of Wayne Gretzky. And another major quote that Wayne Gretzky said is, don't skate to where the park is, skate to where the park will be. And that's one of the reasons he was one of the greatest hockey players was that he always anticipated where the puck was going to be. And I think that that's so true for each and every one of you as well, is you start to think about your career. Don't necessarily follow where everybody's going. Think about where the future of science is gonna be. You know, a lot of, most, in fact, most of the jobs that exist today do not exist when I trained. And so you could be the ones paving the next career that's gonna transform healthcare and help us to continue to change the world. So I want to uh, leave you um, with the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said that that which we persist in doing becomes easier for us to do. Not that the nature of the thing itself has changed, but that our power to do it is increased. And one of the things I want you to, to learn while you're here is that when you start off your program, you're gonna face challenges. And things that you're gonna look at and do today are gonna to seem so overwhelming. But a year from now, you won't even think about them because they're gonna be just second nature to you. So make sure that you understand that everything that you're going through is a bump. And you're gonna get through this. You're gonna do great. And uh, I look forward to meeting each and every one of you individually. We're gonna have, we have regular Dean's Town Halls that we, we do in conjunction with the GSA. And I encourage each of you to join those so you can learn what's going on, ask questions, get involved. You will be tested here, but your perseverance and persistence is what will lead you to becoming world changers long after you've left us. We're gonna have some refreshments out here and I, ex I encourage each one of you to stay and mingle and meet some of your new colleagues. Thank you to all the family members and friends and supporters who are here tonight. And um, I think, yeah, and to that young lady there who's gonna be class of 2035. <laughs> so thank you all. And one more thing, I just want to thank our um, strategic communications folk who, have always, who are always so excellent in helping us um, basically keep a record of everything that we do here. So please give them a round of applause.